Some people say managing Real Madrid is just too easy. They say you could play pretty much any tactic and still win the league. And it gave me an idea when I looked through yesterday's comments on the video. Well, I say it gave me an idea. You gave me the idea. You should try playing attacking players in defence and defenders in attack. That would be interesting. Interesting, he says. Interesting. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do with Real Madrid. And obviously, that's going to mean a new position for Mr. Mbappe. <laughs> ah! Good morning, folks. This one will be nice and normal then, won't it? Oh, hell no! I hear what people are saying about you can win the league with Real Madrid. It all stemmed from that tactic I did with the 2-2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two right down the middle and we ended up doing really well. I've loaded in my favourite tactic at the minute, which is the Sting Tete 24-25. It's basically how I think Arsenal should approach next season. It's on the second channel. If you haven't subscribed to that, jump on over there. So it's a good tactic. I know it works really well. I need a good tactic to help me through this. So normally my team for Real Madrid with this tactic would be something like that. It looks absolute beast and I've got absolutely no doubt it would storm the league. However, it's time for a change. The first change we'll make is probably the biggest one. We're going to take Kylian Mbappe, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, forward player in the world. And we're going to swap him with Eder Militao. Uh. That's right, Eder Militao is now our advanced forward. So I've got a centre-back up front and I've got Kylian at centre-back. Now, if we look at Militao a bit, he's actually not the worst example we could use because he's got that Brazilian technical ability. In fact, the next step, and we're going to do this for each player, is go up to development and training and retrain them into attacking players now watch when i press this it's going to highlight the key attributes for the role and there we go and you can see he's in double figures for a lot of things a lot of people think physicals are the thing that will trump anything else and he's got elite physicals the only thing he really lacks for a striker is finishing but his composure is 13 I have a bit of hope for Edo Militao. So we do the same for Mbappe. We go to training and we're going to retrain him into a defender. I want him to be an all-round defender, so I'm going to ask for libero support. There we go. You can see his marking's horrible. His positioning's terrible. Everything else, apart from tackling, everything else is fine. This is fine. Already this looks ridiculous, but we've got Rodrigo here and we've got Vinicius and Endrick. Let's put Endrick as a centre-back. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And we'll put Rudiger as the advanced playmaker. A big mistake. So we're now we've got six foot three Antonio Rudiger as our advanced playmaker. We're starting to retrain him. I don't have as much faith in him as I did Militao. So our new centre-back partnership is five foot eight, 17-year-old Endrick and worldwide superstar Kylian Mbappe. Okay, it's happening. If I want to help myself out a little bit, I could possibly put Valverde in there to be like a player who's got a little bit of defensive now. So I might do that. So the only positions I'm not going to change are the central midfield two. They are going to have the ultimate job on here. Jude Bellingham and Shemaini or Kamavinga are going to be the two in there while everything else basically goes to shit. Heritage. It's at this point I'd like to point out assistant manager David Ancelotti, somebody who's decided to get jobs by being a fitness coach, but from a fitness coach, he turned into an assistant manager. I wonder how he managed that. Hola, mister. Hola. He's going to be a big part of this story. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Into preseason we went. We got a nice 8-0 win against our second 11, and looking at the player ratings, Kylian Mbappe decided to get a 10 out of 10 at centre-back with two assists and seven clear-cut chances created. I'd love to know how the hell that happened. We got another clean sheet in our next match against Antwerp. And our tour of Belgium continued with success with a 5-0 win. As always, I let my assistant manager take charge of those. What is he cooking? Our first big test was a friendly against Marseille. Have a look at the positional play of our two elite centre-backs, Mbappe and Endrick, and our advanced forward, Militao, on the shoulder of the last man. It's lovely. Kamavinga, the heartbeat of the team, found Carvajal. And there was our Porche Militao. The preseason was quite surprisingly perfect. I don't think so. We're about to go into the season now. Rudiger playing as an advanced playmaker didn't have a great time with a 6.78 average rating. But Mbappe with his five matches and 7.80 still doesn't really want to play there though. Hendrik's been fantastic. He's scored three times. I'm not sure how. First game of the season was going to be a tricky one. It was Atletico Madrid away from home. Shockingly, we kept it tight at the back and Militao scored from the corner. We won the match 1-0 and our centre-back boys kept a clean sheet. Then it was time for Sevilla at home. If I pause it there, you can see Kylian Mbappe locked in at centre-back. There's Vinny Jr. Valverde's playing at right-back and then we've got Eden Militao there and Rudiger just in behind him. Absolute rubbish. 
As we win the ball back, there's my advanced forward Militao. Plays a lovely ball to my inside forward Mendy. And it didn't stop there with Mbappe deciding to do Mbappe things from centre-back. He found Mendy, who crossed for Militao. That was a stomping 5-2 win. However, the next match was landmark. Militao, our forward, holds the ball up, whips it across, and there's Rudiger, the tricky playmaker. Now, Villarreal went in front with a penalty, but the boys reacted. Here's Camavinga holding the team together, bless his heart. Berlin Mendy to Jude, and Militao's there again. From a corner, Endred thinks it across, and there's Militao, our goal machine. This one ends 6-2. Look at the match stats. Now we did lose our first match here against Betis. You can see the positional player of Vinny Jr. and Mbappe. I don't even know where Endrick is. There he is. So those three, keep an eye on them as Rocker goes through. I mean, Mbappe's done about a 360 pirouette there. Endrick's lost. And Betis score. Killian got one back in the 91st minute, but as you can see from the match ratings, it wasn't pretty. Now against Hetafe, Mbappe did that storming run from centre-back again. It's very handy when he does that and Rudiger popped it in. And then the ultimate ball-playing centre-backs, Endrick and Mbappe did it again. Off he goes. He feeds inside forward Mendy. Bang. That one was 7-0 against Leganes. And then we beat Juventus 4-2 in the Champions League. But I actually got annoyed here about a 4-0 win against Vigo and I'll show you why. Vinicius scored the 4, so that was 4-0. It's at this point I thought this was going too well. And then I looked into it a bit. Remember our boy David Ancelotti, the guy who's stolen a career? As I looked at our early season form, and full disclosure, I did leave him in charge of it after I locked in the tactic and team. I was wondering how Mbappe and Vinicius kept scoring from defence. When I looked down at the tactic, it seemed they were in the right places. So I went over to Endrick and had a little look at his current form, the tab down in this bottom corner here. And when I pressed it, I did find he was playing ball playing defence, but in every match, he's getting hauled off at half time. So I wondered, how has Mbappe scored 11 times in 14 matches? And look at his form. This tells us what position he finished the match in. He's basically been playing a centre-back until half-time, and then this cowboy has been disregarding my orders and moving him back up front in the second half. That's despite me doing this. Use current match tactics, use current team selection when possible. He thinks he knows better. We're going to have problems, my son. You're on thin f***ing ice, my pedigree chums. So, what it looks like is happening is... We're using the team I set out in the first half and then he changes it and moves Kylian Mbappe back up front. Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. And upon further investigation, it looks like he's doing it with some of the other players as well. As you can see, Rudiger magically returns back to ball playing defender. There is a couple of matches where he has played the entire match as an advanced playmaker, hilariously. But Ancelotti is messing with my vibe. So after a backstage fight that CM Punk would have been proud of. Tell me when I'm telling lies. There was only one thing to do. I sacked his ass. So although we have done well, and a lot of those games we took leads in the first half. For example, you can see this one against Sevilla. There was goals in the second, 15, 28th minute. That's when the guys were actually in the right position. Same with this one against Villarreal. Four goals in the first half, as you can see from above my head. So what we'll do from this Real Valley the lead match on the 29th of October, we'll go to the New Year, this severe match, and I'll take charge of all of them. I can't do the whole season, otherwise this video will take me nine hours. Oh, it's true! But now we'll get a better reflection of what they're like for a full match. Seeing as I can't rely on any of these guys to do what I asked them to. So in the match with me in Soul Charge, Endrick set up Rudiger from a set piece. And then advanced playmaker Rudiger did it again, thanks to wingback Vinicius. What a finish. 2-0, absolutely battered them. In the next match, my dynamite front two of Rudiger and Militao got us underway. The first from Militao, and then watch Rudiger's movement here, the big dog. Carvajal, our winger, is Rudiger, Bosch. However, we were caught out at the back and it ended up 2-2 against Las Palmas. Having said all of that, we are second in the league with just that one defeat, level on points with Barcelona. Despite playing the first half of matches, we've players flipped. I appointed Tony Kroos as my assistant manager. We might give him a goal later on in charge. But next up, a big test. Juventus away with that flipped team. Right, so here we go then. We're going to play the full match here. Militao, Rüdiger, Vinicius, Mbappe, Endrick, Valverde. If you look at Endrick, by the way, and we go to development and tactics, you can see we've actually sorted it. 13 matches played as centre-back, average rating of 6.83, and that's the two games he played when bloody Ancelotti took over. Okay, we've kicked off. There's Mbappe and Hendrik at the back there, and there's Rudiger, Militao, and then you've got Carvajal 
Mendy, Vinicius, all doing their thing. Let's see how this one goes away at Juve. They're back in their positions, are they? Let's have a little look, pause it in. You can see Hendricks a little bit all over the place. Look on Mbappe. He's like prime Maldini at the minute. What? But it looks like we might be under the cosh here with Chiesa. Hendricks completely left his man in Yildiz. And Vlahovic puts it in. Where were you, Killian? So into the second half, we're 2-0 down. Here's Vinicius, he's all from a corner, so there should be bodies up there. Mbappe gets it across, and there's Rudiger. However, this situation is the problem right here. If you pause it there, you've got Kylian Mbappe marking Dusan Vlahovic. He's absolutely asleep, and then he just stops running, and then in goes the third. Now, later on, the centre-backs is keeping in position. Rudiger with a sweeping pass, and there's Militao who puts it in. It wasn't enough, the game ends 3-2, but what a ride. Militao's actually done all right. He's got six goals in 17 matches. And growing into the role is Anton Rudiger. He's got six as well with a couple of assists. So then I thought I'd give Tony Kroos a go and see if he would follow my orders. Now Militao scored a header against Barcelona. The match ended 7-1. As you can see from the formation, all of Barcelona's players should hang their heads in shame getting battered by that. Then we did the same to Stuttgart and Alaves. And then I realized Killian scored a hat trick. So when I watched the goals, I'd realised that Tony Kroos hadn't even waited until half-time on this occasion. Militao had been thrown back to centre-back and he'd thrown Mbappe back up front. You literally cannot trust anyone these days. I mean, there's two stories here. The first story is how the hell has that tactic just won 7-1, 6-1 and 3-1? And the second story is never rely on your assistant manager to do what you ask him to. So I've decided that I will in fact now take charge of these next five matches no matter how long it takes. So we've got Sevilla, two against Atletico Madrid, Real Sociedad and whatever the Spanish Cup third round is to see how many matches we can win. And they will be playing this system and those positions. Team. That's the team for match one. We took the league thanks to our striker Militao and then Vinicius overlapping from left wing back whipped it across for Rudiger. Mbappe and Hendrik are on sevens at the back by the way. Rudiger has just scored a second. Carvajal whips it across to Valverde. There he is. The game ends 4-1. I do not know what to say anymore. Next up, Atletico Madrid. Unchanged team for this one. At the set piece, Vinicius stays up front. Obviously, he's small and pacey, so the computer will do that for you if you assign set piece takers. And he bloody scored from there. Rudiger scored from a free kick. And then for any doubters, look at this goal. Vinicius... Inside to centre-back Mbappe, he charges forward, lays it through to Carvajal, that's 4-0, it's not even 40 minutes. What is happening? You can see there, 4-0, there's the team, Real Madrid formation is beneath my head, in fact I'll change it up here so you can see it. There it is, Hendrik Mbappe, Vinicius as a wing-back, Rudiger, Militao, maybe those people saying it doesn't matter what you play with Real Madrid were right. Half time came, it was 5 0. This is Atletico Madrid we're playing. And there you can see the tactic, I've not changed a thing. Militao then scored another goal, I kid you not, assisted by Rudiger. And then the centre backs got bored and decided to pass to each other. Here's Hendrik, he finds Mbappe and off he goes. At the 70 minute mark, it was 7 0 in the Madrid derby. Atletico woke up near the end and scored three late goals, but it ended 7-3 and I have more questions than answers now. So we've just dismantled Atletico Madrid playing that formation and that team. So it means that we're top of the league. A lot of the season when the assistant manager was in charge, up until half-time, we played the flip and then they flipped it back. We've now found that when we've been doing it, we're still winning. Played Atletico again at the halfway point. It was a bit closer this time, but we still led 2-1. By the time Hendrik scored from this free kick, the game was as good as over. Striker Edda Militao did score as a fifth though. I'm at a loss for words, I really am. Okay, the final one we'll do, and it's Barcelona in this final of the Super Cup, okay? With that team, let's see. Bit of faith restored as Lewandowski got the better of his tiny centre-back opposition. And we did concede a second to Ferran Torres, unmarked. But with 88 minutes to go, they haven't blasted through us here at all like you'd expect. We did lose, being the better team, but only by two goals. So, my dudes, I have no idea what to make of this. What do you make of it? What do you make of it? There has been a bit of progression from the players. Hendrik can now actually play a centre-back look. He is a decent, 
wide centre back because he's played there that much. Mbappe is having a bit more of a struggle getting used to the role, but he is getting there. It's not that piercing red anymore. It's more orange. He's getting there, higher up the pitch. Rudiger again, he's nearly there. As Eda Middle Tau also nearly there. So they are getting there. But I think what this shows, this combination of results where they played the first half of that clutch of games, then we completely took charge and completely battered teams down here, does show that if you've got a really strong team, they can probably play whatever you want them to. Thoughts? Put them in the comments. I'm intrigued to see.